Now we're going to look at more in-depth properties of limits. All those initial uh, videos were meant to give you a feel for them graphically and numerically. Now we're going to concentrate on a collection of rules involving limits. First thing is we hide the heaviest and most serious definition of a limit until later sections because it's, it's very, very unpleasant. So instead we have what I call a working definition and it goes like this. I want to define the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l. What does that mean? Basically I need for x to be close to a. If x is close to a then f of x is close to l. So, I think probably the best idea is to maybe continue with some graphical examples and to show you some of the rules that are involved here. I sort of indicated that already, what was in that definition, but in calculus we make use of constants a great deal, so in that vein, let C be some constant, just a, a number that you don't know the value of. The limit as x goes to A of C is C. This is our first rule of all the limit rules. And I think perhaps the best way to go about this is to do some graphing uh, of real examples that fit what I just did. So I'm going to graph a constant. And you should remember if I graph a constant, in this case I'll graph y equals 3, it's just a horizontal line. And if you were to graph y equals c, c some constant, that would be nothing more than a horizontal line. So let me grab this picture. This is y equals 3, which is the, well, let me use f of x notation. This is f of x equals 3, which is just the constant function, uh, y equals 3, horizontal line, uh, whatever way you want to think about it as. And let's pick some limit. You should know that this thing, being a line, it has no holes, it has no breaks. Um, Let's look at the limit as x goes to 5 of just the number 3. So if you go to the graph and go around the number 5 and then go up to the graph, well the point 5, 3 is actually on the graph. It's not just close, it's right at the target location. So remember the, the value of the limit is the y value at that point. So, in that case, it's a very simple graph, uh, very simple to do. There's no hole in it. Even if there was a hole in it, it would still be 3. But we're going to work our way from a pretty gentle upbringing here. We're going to go to the next thing. What's the limit as x goes to a of just x? Well, it's a. And I'll draw a picture. Let, oh, I won't. I'm not actually drawing the picture. The, my computer is drawing the picture. So let me change that function to just f of x equals x and graph. Very simple. It's another graph that you know has no holes and no breaks. It's solid. A line is a solid object. So it should make sense that uh, if there's no hole you can just take the number that happens to occur at the value of a. Let's see here, let's do, look at 6. If you go up from there, the point 6, 6 is on the graph. And you can see that if you allow x to get close to 6 from either the left or the right, it's going to be very close to that point on the graph. So the limit as x goes to 6 of x is 6, in line with the property that we just talked about there. Next limit property is if let's say you have two functions f of x and g of x. 
Suppose that you know the limit as x goes to a of f of x exists, and you know that the limit as x goes to a of g of x also exists. Then the limit as x goes to a of f of x times g of x equals the limit as x goes to a of f of x times the limit as x goes to a of g of x. And to show you an example of this, let me just make up some numbers and, and throw it on the calculator. Actually, not the calculator, because the calculator's graphs are, are limited in their um, detail. So I, I, a lot of times I'll use more power than just the graphing calculator. I think what I'll do is I'll set f of x equals x squared plus 1. which is a parabola and it has no holes so finding the limit anywhere for that particular function is easy and then for my second function I'll do 2x minus 3 and then for my third what I'm going to do then is graph the third function which will be the product of those two functions so my third function will be the function x squared plus 1 times the function 2x minus 3. I'm having a little trouble seeing here. Touching the right buttons would be nice. No, let's go back. There we go. x squared plus 1, parentheses around it, and then x 2x minus 3, I want parentheses around that. So I'm graphing two functions, and then I'm graphing the product of the two functions underneath or with them as well. I want to pick out a color that will make it stand out, and to me that dark green isn't doing it. So let me pick out something more ridiculous. A loud pink? Oh, fine. Okay. Let's take a look at the limit as x goes to negative 1. There's another thing I didn't mean to pull up. So let me copy this and take it over to the, the notebook. Now let me calculate the limit as x goes to negative 1 of each of these three functions and I'll show you the third functions limit is the product of the other two functions limits so let's if you want to use the notation I'm using above let f of x be the x squared plus 1 and then g of x be the 2x minus 3 now you can use your graph for everything here if I want the limit as x goes to negative 1 of x squared plus 1 I can just look right to the graph I see that negative 1, 1 is on that, no wait, negative 1, 2 is on that graph. So the limit is 2 for x squared plus 1. Then the limit is x goes to negative 1 of 2x minus 3. I'll look to the graph there and it looks to me like negative 1, 5 is a point on that graph. So this limit is uh, well, negative 1, negative 5 is negative 5. The product of those two limits is negative 10. Now, if you look at the limit as x goes to negative 1 of the product x squared plus 1 with 2x minus 3, you can look at the graph of that, and at the very bottom you can see that the point negative 1 comma negative 10 is on that graph. And negative 10 is, in fact, equal to 2 times negative 5. So I verified that particular limit. Uh, well, I'm trying to keep the most of these under 10 minutes, so...